here with Justin Witt. We're standing here in front of the Frontier Supercomputer, the HPE AMD system that recently was the first to cross the Limpac Exaflops milestone. You and your team must be feeling pretty good about this. We are very excited. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It was quite the accomplishment. The team worked really hard. The part our partners at HPE and AMD have worked tremendously hard to make this happen, and we couldn't be happier. Yeah. This is great. Well, congratulations. Um, so tell us about the system. Uh, we're standing in some in front of the, some of the cabinets. Can you tell us about what's inside? Sure. This is these are HPE Cray EX systems. Uh, we have 74 cabinets of this, 9,408 nodes. Each node has one CPU and four GPUs. The GPUs are the uh, MI250Xs. The uh, CPUs are an AMD Epic CPU. Uh, it's all wired together with the high-speed Cray interconnect called Slingshot. Uh, and uh, it's a water-cooled system. Uh, we've been up and running now. You know, we started getting hardware uh, last October. Uh, and we've been building the system, testing it, and had it up and running now for a few months. So I understand the process to get it uh, benchmarked for in time for the Top 500 was right to the wire. You want to share a little about that? What that experience was like? It was right to the wire. It's fun. The funny thing about these systems is that they're so large you can only build them for the first time when all the hardware arrives. So when the hardware arrived, we started putting things together, and it takes a while. Uh, once we had it up, you know, and had all the hardware uh, functioning, then you start to tune the system. And we've kind of been in that mode for several months now, where in the daytime we would make adjustments, make tunings. At nighttime we would check our work by running benchmarks on it and seeing how we did. And we were running out of time. You know, the, the uh, May list was coming up, and uh, we were down to, you know, early, maybe mid-May, still running always running overnight with uh, you know us and the engineers around the country watching the power profiles at home and saying oh this this looks like a good run or hey let's kill it and let's start it again and literally with with you know a few hours before the deadline we were able to get a run through that broke the exascale barrier yeah and what that was 1.1 exaflops uh, the high performance limpack benchmark yes and then the system also very impressively, I uh, got a number two on the Green 500 and its companion, the smaller companion, the test and development, the Frontier TBS uh, Borg, I think you call it. Yes. Uh, it was number number one um, with a pretty impressive energy efficiency rating. Yes, over yep. 60 gigaflops per watt for, yeah. the, for the single cabinet run, so very impressive. And actually, the I guess the top four spots on the Green 500 were the same Frontier architecture. That Frontier Blade architecture. And tell us a little bit more about the cooling. I know you did a lot of facility upgrades for the power and cooling. The compute is completely liquid cooled. It is. Yep. Yes, it is. So uh, this is the data center where we formerly had the Titan supercomputer. Uh, and so we removed that supercomputer and refurbished this data center. We knew that we needed more power. We needed more cooling. Uh, so we brought in 40 megawatts of power to the data center, and we have 40 megawatts of cooling available. Frontier really only uses about 29 megawatts of that at its very peak, uh, and so there were a lot of uh, construction work to get that done and get the cooling in place ahead of the system. And does that liquid cooling dynamically adjust to the workload? It does. Yep. It does. These are incredibly instrumented machines at this point. We're even down to the individual components on the individual node boards. There's, there are sensors there that are monitoring temperatures so we can adjust the cooling levels up and down to make sure that the system stays at a safe temperature. Mm -hmm. And what would you say about the volume level in the room? And we're using a, a mic here, but it's really not too loud as far as data centers go. That's right. Uh, you probably visited during the Titan days where we would have been wearing earmuffs and we wouldn't be having this conversation. Yeah. Uh, Summit was a lot quieter than that. Uh, and this is even a little bit quieter than than, uh, than Summit was. So we, they're they're getting quieter because they're going to liquid cooled. We don't have fans. We don't have rear doors where we're exchanging heat with the room. Yeah. So it's 100% liquid cooled. But some of the noise we're hearing is actually from from the storage systems that are that are also uh, uh, HPE and are are air cooled. Yes, on the yep. other side of the room. They're they're a little louder. So they're on the other side of the room, and you can you can they're pretty loud. <laughs> yeah. So I understand you're maybe coming up towards the end of the acceptance process. How's that going? 
So we're actually coming up to the point where we will start the acceptance process. So basically, up until now, we've been doing a lot of the testing and a lot of tuning with pre-production software. And so we've got to get all the production software on the system, you know, from, from the network software to the programming environments to all that, get it to what, the, what we will use when we actually have researchers on the system. Once we have that done and everything's checked out, we will start the acceptance process on the machine. So what's running on Frontier right now? So right now we're still doing some benchmark testing and we're also doing a lot of checks on this new, these new software packages we put yeah. on. So we'll put things on, we run benchmarks, we run uh, real world applications on the system to make sure that as we've upgraded software, we haven't introduced any new bugs to the system. Is there a dashboard somewhere you, you pull up and you can see exactly what's running yeah, on it? That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's right. That's cool. And, you know, I mentioned all the instrumentation and sensors. The same dashboard, we can look at temperatures down to the individual yep. GPUs to see, you know, how hot the GPUs are running, to see, uh, you know, what the flow rates are through the system. It's really impressive. And what, what will some of the very first workloads be when it goes into early science? Here at OCF, we have the Center for uh, Accelerated Application Readiness. We call it CAR. Uh, we jokingly say it's our vehicle for application <laughs> readiness. Uh, and that group supports eight apps for the OLCF and 12 apps for, uh, for the Exascale Computing Project. So the plan is that we'll have over 20 apps that are ready to do science on day one of the system. Yep, Exascale, they say Exascale Readiness on day one is the, right. is the tagline right. there. And you, with the, given the long pr procurement cycles for these enormous instruments, um, you're already doing the planning for the next supercomputer after Frontier, which you call OLCF six. Six. Yes. So, what, what, what are you? Um, how are you preparing for for that system? And where will? Where do you think it will go? Yeah. So, yeah. In project parlance, you know, Frontier was OLCF five. The next system will be OLCF six. And we're really just in the very conceptual thinking about it phases at this point. Uh, that system will likely go in this room. We have room for that system both from a space and from a power and cooling perspective. Partly because these are so dense that That's you needed right. fewer, ca fewer cabinets. That's than, exactly yeah. right, yeah. Yeah, uh, and so, and then you also still have Summit Summit here, the previous top, top 500 number one system. That was the IBM NVIDIA machine. That's right. Um, you know, now what are the plans for Summit? What will the plans for Summit be once you have Frontier up in full production? So Summit's still a great system. Uh, it's highly utilized at this point. Even as we speak, it's you know probably 95, 95%, maybe more full uh, with researchers running codes on that system. Uh, and so it's still a great system at this point. We'd normally like to run systems for at least a year overlap so that we can make sure that Frontier's up and stable and give people time to transition their data and their, and their applications over to the new system. But Frontier's a really good system, so we'll have to wait and see, but we'll at least run it for a year and overlap with Frontier. Yeah. Oh, and then a very important question. What, we, we talked a little bit about it, but maybe just from a more personal point of view, looking at the science that Frontier and Exascale will enable, what are you most excited about? So I, I'm excited about a lot of different science. Uh, you know, really with the scales of these systems, you know, you'll be able to approach problems we've never been able to approach before. I'm a CFD person by training, so I always have a soft spot for the CFD codes, but some of the most exciting things are the work in artificial intelligence and those workloads. You know, you have researchers that are looking at, uh, you know, how to, how to develop better treatments for different diseases, how to improve efficacies of treatments. And these systems are capable of digesting just incredible amounts of data. Think about laboratory reports or pathology reports, thousands of them and they can draw inferences across these reports that no human being could ever do, but that a supercomputer can do. And some of that, to me, is, is really exciting. So, speaking of CFD, are you using computational fluid dynamics to model the, the, the water flow and the cooling system? We are. Yeah. Yeah, we are. That's a That's recent pretty effort. Neat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, well, thank you so much, and we appreciate the tour. No, anytime. You guys are always welcome. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. All right.